you have 30 minutes to do that. Um, Mr. Speaker, sir, this is Ndegwa Njiru. Perhaps before I do my opening remarks or statement with assistance of my fellow counsel, permit me, Mr. Speaker, sir, to draw the attention of the House to the letter dated 8th of March 2024, which letter invoked rule number 10 of the third schedule of the rules governing these proceedings. Yeah, Senator Mazayo, what is uh, the issue? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It would be better if uh, the council would be able to guide by saying which volume he's referring to that we have, so that we are able to see. So as you make your opening statement, please pinpoint exactly which volume you're referring to and even the page where that document you're mentioning is contained. I'm well guided, Mr. Speaker, sir. Um, the letter that I'm referring to, Mr. Speaker, sir, is the letter that was sent by the Speaker and the Clerk of the County Assembly of Kisi to the Clerk of the Senate which later was seeking to invoke the provisions of Rule 10 in so far as the question of issuance of summons are in issue. And therefore, that does where, not... Where is that later contained? So not... that uh, the Honorable Senators can follow. Honorable Speaker, the letter does not form part of the proceedings. It's okay. the, that you um, uh, to the clerk just informed me exactly that, and uh, it's being made uh, available to honorable senators. May the copies be circulated to the honorable senators. I am also obliged, Mr. Speaker, sir. And as such, Mr. Speaker, sir, permit me to make an application pursuant to Rule 10 of this house proceedings equally assisted by article 50 of the constitution that this honorable court be pleased to issue summons to one mr david hagai oyagi mr david hagai oyagi works with the, Kiku, the Kisi County Government as a Director of Enforcement and Compliance. The basis of our application, Mr. Speaker, sir, is that while the charges were being read out to His Excellency, the, Govern, the Deputy Governor, there was a charge that involved the misuse of the county resources to wit 20 enforcement officers were unlawfully deployed to arrest and harass one Mr. Ruben Onari Monda and subsequently the charges have also indicated that at least four county enforcement officers are deployed by the deputy governor of Kisi County to, con to conduct and execute all jobs such as milking cows, cooking for dogs, at the residence of the deputy governor. In the application for summons, we requested the Senate to indicate to the said David, that he should produce his appointment letter and any other relevant document that speaks to or against the allegations. Mr. Speaker, sir, the summons being sought will assist this Honorable House to meet its mandate under Section 33 
which provides that other than just presiding for a hearing of a case such as this one, Section 33 permits this House also to initiate investigations into the allegations so as to determine the propriety or the impropriety of the allegation contained therein. If the summons being sought by the county assembly are therefore issued, the deputy governor will suffer no prejudice whatsoever as he'll be granted an opportunity to test the veracity of the statements or evidence that shall be adduced before this house by the said David Hagai Oyagi. Mr. Speaker, sir, these are clear tenets dictated by Article 50 of the Constitution, which the Constitution provides that Article 50 is a non-derogable right, a right to a fair hearing. A fair hearing in this case, Mr. Speaker, sir, and the interpretation of the County Assembly of Kisi means that the Senate shall be afforded an opportunity and the facilities available to determine the veracity of that case. Mr. Speaker, sir, the refusal to issue the summons to the said David Hagai will deny this Senate an opportunity to test whether or not the Deputy Governor of Kisi County has been abusing his office by misapplication and misappropriation of the county resources. It's all known to us that human resource is a rare resource that facilitates and wills the movement of the county, the administration of the county. Therefore, the question for determination, when determining to grant, to issue the summons or not to grant, is therefore, will the Senate be afforded a proper opportunity to test the veracity of that issue. Finally, Mr. Speaker, sir, in the battle of the documents that were sent to us and that were shared and exchanged by the respondents, herein being the Deputy Governor, we are making an application before this court that paragraph 48 or the way to paragraph 49 of the document be expunged for being irrelevant to these proceedings and that the same do not speak to the question or to the case before the Senate. Mr. Speaker, sir, the offending paragraphs which appears that is the Deputy Governor's... Yes, uh, just hold on, Council. Senator Mogheni, what is the issue? Yeah, Mr. Speaker, um, the council is doing very well, but for purposes of us being able to follow uh, his submissions easily, we will want him to make reference to the particular volume of the document he's making reference to, and if possible, refer us to the page so that we are able to move with him. Council, I thought I've uh, made uh, that position pretty clear. Yes. I was just about to make reference. Mr. Speaker, sir, I'm referring to the battle of document appearing in blue from the farm of my senior land friend, Mr. Kato Keegan and Kimboi, marked as DG. That is the response. And the, again, the document is dated the 10th of March, 2024. Mr. Speaker, I am referring to... What is the title of that volume, Council? It's, it's DG. It's, it belongs to the Deputy Governor. 
is indicated in black as DG to mean, I think, Deputy Governor. At page E8, 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 E into brackets 8. What is the issue, Senator Fernandi? Mr. Speaker, uh, I had indicated earlier that I had uh, a, a clarification that I needed to, to seek under Constitutional Article 71 and then the impeachment procedure bill, uh, impeachment procedure under the standing orders. So I wanted to get your guidance and maybe your ruling because. Uh, one of the lawyers that is representing the deputy governor of Kisi uh, Senator Fernando, happens to be... Senator Fernando will come to the Labour Party. Okay, okay. Thank positions. you. Proceed, Council. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. I hope the Senate, Honorable Senators are with, are with me. At page 8, paragraph 48, all the way to page 15, paragraph 64. Mr. Speaker, sir, the paragraphs th that I have highlighted contains material facts that do not relate to the proceedings before the Senate. Number two, Mr. Speaker, sir, the paragraphs that I've indicated mentions individuals or makes reference to individuals who are not party to these proceedings. For example, Mr. Speaker, sir, A look at paragraph 53 of the said document appearing at page 9 of the document make references to the governor of Kisi County. Further to that, Mr. Speaker, sir, at paragraph 61, at page 13 of the document, again, the document makes reference to the spouse, the spouse, that's the first lady, to the governor of Kisi County. Equally, Mr. Speaker, sir, the pages makes reference to matters of budgets and more so Paragraph 56, 57, 58, at page, all the way to page 11. Those are not matters that forms part and parcel of these proceedings. The consequence of this pleading will only embarrass individuals who are not party to these proceedings and not just embarrass but deny them an opportunity to appear and be heard by this distinguished house. We all understand that it's strike law, that the doctrines of natural justice, granting a party an opportunity to be heard, is one of the principles elucidated under Article 50 of the Constitution. And as such, Mr. Speaker, sir, the aforementioned paragraphs it's our humble prayer that the same should be expunged from record as they do not form part and parcel of the allegations contained in the charge now read to the Deputy Governor. As I sum up, Mr. Speaker, sir, and invite my learned friend, Mr. Motuma, for supplementary submissions. 
permit me, Mr. Speaker, sir, to lead the House to page 12 of the document and paragraph F, just to indicate the irrelevance of the evidence contained. It makes reference to the members of the Judicial Service Commission. The allegations are that the Judicial Service Commission, that the effect of conducting county affairs, I may read in, in verbatim, and files at the personal residence is that the governor's wife attends meetings, makes inputs to official county matters, and serves as both protocol officers and deputy, gov uh, and deputy governor inter alia the Judicial Service Commission. In determining the relevance of these averments contained in the for said paragraphs, the, we invite the Senate to interrogate the purpose of such kind of averments, the objective of such kind of averments, and whether or not they inform the charge. Finally, Mr. Speaker, sir, permit me to guide the House to page 15 at paragraph 64. Again, it makes references to individuals not before this assembly, make references to video clips and photos that did not form part and parcel of the evidence at the county assembly. Suffice to note that during the proceedings at the county assembly, the deputy, speak, the deputy governor, beg your pardon, appeared before the county assembly and filed his response, dated the 29th of February. These video clips have no relevance to the proceedings, and I'm aware that it may, be, it may prejudice the senators' determination as to the relevance of these video clips because they have not yet been played. We had the opportunity of reviewing them, analyzing them, and made an opinion to which we invite the Senate, the honorable senators, to hold that they have no relevance. It may perhaps be paramount or it perhaps may be important for those clips to be prayed for the senators to determine their relevance when determining to expurge the said um, paragraphs. With your kind permission, Mr. Speaker, sir, permit me to invite Mr. Motuma for further submissions.